gathering. Our first uh, episode today is a tribute to David and Lydia Hadfield, who are visiting from Manchester, England. They're visiting their son, Ian, and their grandsons, Neil, Chris, and Kevin, all whom will be joining us uh, for dinner later. David and Lydia are sailing back to Southampton from New York tomorrow, and I thought we'd send them off with a nice Bon Voyage dinner. So, the menu I have planned is scotched eggs, beef wellington with Madeira sauce, baked stuffed onions, sautéed carrots, uh, roasted potatoes, followed up by Lydia's favorite dessert, rum trifle. So let's get started. I'm going to start first with the dessert. I have here crushed lady fingers, oh maybe about four packages. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour them right into this posh bowl. You know, it's, it's funny, being around David and Lydia for the past three weeks, um, a lot of their, their terms and uh, the way they speak kind of rubs off on you. It's kind of funny. Um, so we get that nice in the bowl. And then we're going to take one cup of very strong coffee. We're going to add to it four teaspoons of sugar and two tablespoons of rum. And we're going to mix that up. And what we want to do is drizzle it over the lady fingers just so that it's moist, not messy. There we go. Now to this, we're going to add two packages of chocolate pudding, which I prepared earlier. I'm just going to pour that all the way around. little shake there and what we're going to do is put this in the fridge and let it set later on we'll put whipped cream on it with uh, shaved chocolate Ghirardelli's my favorite so uh, let me go put this in the fridge and we'll be right back I'm starting the scotch eggs now and you have to bear with me because I've never made them before but they sound really good I have here a few pounds of ground pork and what you want to do, because I'm making a dozen eggs, we're having about maybe 10 people for dinner and um, we'll have a couple left over. So what you want to do is roughly make out 10 patties with the sausage, move this over here, maybe you can see better. And just, it um, doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to wrap around an egg. Once you get your patties all squared away, you're going to take an egg and roll it in the flour. You're going to place it in the center and then wrap the sausage around it, ground pork, till it forms like a large egg. So, I've just finished all 12 eggs, and what we're going to do now is coat them in breadcrumbs after an egg wash bath. To the breadcrumbs, I'm adding a teaspoon of sage for some flavoring. Mix that up. Give the scotch egg a little bath. And then cut 
coat it in the breadcrumbs. Get them ready for frying. I'm just waiting for the oil to heat up. I'm going to start frying these scotch eggs. I've got my bowl with paper towels to drain them in when they're done. And then we'll put them in the fridge, let them chill. And when we're done preparing the other dishes, we'll assemble these plates. This is Lydia Hadfield. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Now, I understand these scotch eggs are bigger than normal. Yeah, well, you're doing them American style. Yeah, oh, there you go, American style, it's true. I still look like eggs. <laughs> they look beautiful. So, while I finish these and get these in the fridge downstairs, uh, we'll be back with those stuffed eggs. So what I have here is two quarts of beef broth. And what we're going to do is reduce it by about a third. So I'll bring it to a boil and then I'll put it on medium heat and let that cook down. So while we're doing that, I'd like to prepare my stuffing for the baked onions. So, here we have two cups of dry breadcrumbs. We have eight strips of bacon cooked and crumbled. We have two tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley. We have one teaspoon of sage, one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of mace, and two tablespoons of sherry. So we will mix that up. Spoon. You just want to make sure you mix it all up, get a pretty good mixture here. Now what I have here are 10 onions. What I did was I cut the tops off and left the bottoms on so that when you boil them they don't fall apart. So what we're going to do here is we're going to slice off the bottom and then you're going to pull out about a third. You can throw this away, but save this to chop and put back in the stuffing. Now what you want to do is grab a little, stuff it in the center, form the circle again, and place it in the dish for baking. And I'd like to introduce you to David Hadfield, Lydia's husband. And um, they're just going to chat away while I'm peeling the potatoes because they always have such interesting facts and stories to tell. <laughs> well, the first one is to uh, tell Terry that although we've made fun of her Scotch eggs, oh, and it's not her uh, fault because in England, sausage meat is quite different from your sausage meat. In England, it's probably 75% breadcrumbs with 25% of minced pork and seasoning and therefore it uh, adheres 
differently to the eggs, the boiled eggs. Uh, and another thing I've been telling them about is that during the Second World War, when I was a small child, uh, we were on rationing and we had... Always been old, Mother. Born at a very <laughs> early age. <laughs> no, but no, we had, we had rationing and meat was uh, rationed oh, by price. Just, just said so if you had all that percentage is a lamb chop, 20% of you would, sausage meat. <laughs> if you wanted a lamb chop, that would probably be your week's ration of meat. Uh, but the butchers were allowed a certain proportion of meat to make sausages and these weren't rationed. So the, to make the meat go further, more and more breadcrumbs was added with herbs and spices so that he could make more sausages. Uh, also, um, they were made of lamb and they would put in dried apricots with them. How many percent of lime was it? Well, they probably, I don't know, but at uh, probably 20, only 25% of the sausage would be meat. Mm. The rest would be, uh, as I say, breadcrumbs and fat. What I'm going to do now is the roasted potatoes. Very simple dish. Everybody pretty much knows how to make these things. Uh, you just cut up the potatoes, and a lot of people cut them different shapes, sizes. Um, I'm usually in a rush when I'm preparing for dinner, so I don't think too much about it. I just make sure they're cut and that uh, they're not too, too big that you can't uh, pop one in your mouth. Especially when they're cooking and you want to taste one. You take one out of the oven when they're almost golden brown and throw a little salt on it and you're very there. Okay, so, and roasted potatoes were always on the menu, Sunday dinner. So I'm going to drizzle, oh, maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm going to take garlic powder and just sprinkle around the top. And then just coat the potatoes. You want all the potatoes coated with the oil so that when they bake in the oven, they get nice and golden brown and roasted. Nothing like pan. I spray the roasting pan, makes clean up a breeze. Then you just plop them in there. And then into the oven. Now I'm going to put this in at 375 for about, oh, 45 minutes, keeping a good watch on it and sneaking a taste every time I can. We're going to start our Beef Wellington main course. It is a wonderful dish and um, can't wait to get going. So be right back. We got this beautiful beef tenderloin and um, this right here is not going to do us too well. So I'm going to cut this off. and save this for a later use. And what I'm going to do is season it first off, salt and pepper. And we're seasoning the other side for nice even seasoning. Excuse me while I wash my hands. So what I'm going to start now is called Duxel. And what that is, it's going to be mixed in with my pate and put over the tenderloin. 
before we put the pastry on it. So again, I spray with Pam. Don't really even need to say that anymore. And you get that butter melting. As you can see, our stock is still reducing quite nicely. And a Duxelle sauce is chopped shallots and mushrooms gently sauteed in butter. Put the shallots in first. gently cook it on low to medium heat. Add the mushrooms. And again, let that gently saute. The Excel seems to be about ready. What I'm going to do with the slotted spoon is put it in a mixing dish. And then what we're going to do is add our 16 ounces of pate. Mix this all together to get a nice consistency. What I'm going to do first is lay out some puff pastry. And don't worry if it falls apart. You can certainly squeeze it back together. And I had sheets here. that I cut in half to be able to accommodate the size of the tenderloin. And you place that right on top. It should be a pretty good fit. Then what we're gonna do is take our pate mixture Put this on top of the tenderloin. And you want to cover the meat, sealing the ends. And on top of this, I'm going to give it an egg bath, wash, and you just want to go over the whole thing. And I'm sure you're wondering what these cookie cutters are doing here, the shapes in particular. They're shapes of playing cards, if you haven't guessed already. And since David and Lydia have been here, they've introduced me to a game called Kaluki. And it's a lot like our gin rummy, but it's much harder. And so I'm just going to take these cutters and I'm going to Give it a little coating of the egg so that it adheres pretty good. Put that over here. Now, it's ready to go in the oven. So we're going to put this in at 350 degrees for about 40 to 60 minutes. So. Once we get this in the oven, we'll start with our last dish, sautéed carrots, 
and then we'll finish off our dessert and we'll put together our appetizer of scotch eggs. Okay, we just have a few more things to do before finishing up. We've got our beef wellington in the oven with the roasted potatoes. The stuffed onions just came out. They're looking pretty good. The beef stock reduced quite nicely. So what I'm going to do right now is add two cups of Madeira wine. And we're going to let that continue to cook medium-high heat. In a little bit, we'll add some butter to it and thicken it up. Um, next, we're going to do the carrots. And again, we're going to use a stick of butter. I'm going to melt that. And while I'm waiting for that to happen, I'm going to prepare the scotch egg plates. And I'm going to do this assembly style, make it very easy and quick. going to do, we're going to take mixed greens and put some in the plate. And then we're going to take one of these scotch eggs and just place it in the center. And we have one left over for whoever stops by unannounced, which happens all the time here at the gathering. These sautéed carrots are very basic, just sautéed in butter. And I have two tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. I'll be adding to it. That sauce smells really nice. So I'll put these in. And I've got the heat on medium heat. Just give those a good coating. And then what I want to do, I'm just going to add the parsley. Another very easy, simple dish. But we'll complement the beef wellington quite nicely. And I think what we're going to do now is finish off our dessert then we will get ready for our guests. Now, here we have the half-made trifle that's been sitting in the fridge all afternoon, molding light nicely. What we're going to do is take ready whip. shaved some chocolate Ghirardelli's as I mentioned before and you just want to sprinkle this on the top again this was one of Lydia's favorite desserts that she used to make for the kids when they were young and when I was putting this menu together Ian did mention first off rum trifle so there you have it. And I just wanted to show you how I made the curls. Very simple, peeler. And you just go slowly till you have some curls. And there you have it. So with all of this done, I'm going to go set the table and get a few last minute details ready and our guests should be arriving any minute. So hang in there. As you can see, everything's out of the oven and on the buffet, ready to go. The sauce turned out quite nicely. And I'm just gonna pour that in a gravy boat. Okay. Our guests are here, so why don't we all come on out and all right, ready to eat. Hey. 
Another another guy who was born at a very early age, and here's another one, Neil. He was born at a very early age too. <laughs> <laughs> and this one was the youngest one. He was born at an earlier age. <laughs> All right, sit down. Shut up.